This is the worst way to store your photos, your videos, any type of content or data you want to store. This is not the ideal way. We've got portable hard drives. A lot of people use portable hard drives. They're a lot cheaper. You can get five terabytes for a decent price, but they're very prone to failure. I've bought a portable hard drive. I had multiple ones fail on me. And when that happens, you're screwed. So what's the next best thing you can do? You can buy two of them. That actually is a much better solution because if one breaks, you can just put it on the other one, which is, I guess, good and all, but then you're going to have all this mismatched data. You have to sync everything yourself it's an absolute nightmare so that's not ideal either some people have resorted to buying purely SSDs so this is like the Samsung SSD honestly these are pretty good they've never failed on me yet but you can't guarantee that one of these are gonna last 10 20 years so that brings us to what is the answer the solution is a NAS now don't be too scared I know there are a lot of NAS videos out there but I personally feel like they're so convoluted they're for like high-level professionals who want to like run a team run almost a data center at home. And there's no just like content creators, photographers, there's no layman's terms, there's no easy guide for this process. So I'm going to take you through that today and give you my experience, what I'd recommend of actually using a NAS that I've completely set up with Synology. That is the brand I would recommend if you want to avoid some headaches. But firstly, if you don't know what a NAS is, it's basically a box that has multiple storage drives and unifies everything together. So when you plug into your computer, for example, you can access just one place and everything's unified. And the most compelling reason to have a NAS is that there is built-in redundancy if you have multiple hard drives that are spinning in your NAS. So for example, if you have four hard drives and just one of them breaks, basically there is redundancy or some type of RAID configuration, which is kind of like technical terms. Long story short, you can set the hard drives up so that if one breaks, everything else will be untouched and fine. All you have to do is replace the hard drive and then you'll be business as usual. Compare that to your portable hard drive. If one breaks, you're screwed and you want to cry and you're sad. The next benefit, which is pretty obvious, is that everything is unified. So depending on what NAS you buy, it can be two bays, four bays, I have an eight bay NAS. Basically, those are slots for hard drives. And once you plug that into your computer, it's just one little place and it's not like eight separate things on your computer, it's just one big hard drive. So things are much more convenient than having freaking eight portable hard drives, plugging it everywhere, searching for whatever file you want. Everything's going to be in one place. So another positive is that a NAS is very easy to set up. I have a Synology 1821 Plus. In general, Synology is the way to go. It has a really easy to use user interface. Everything is very easy no type of program or any like thinking you have to do. And that is what I have and what I definitely would recommend. But we'll talk about recommendations later. Another beautiful thing about NAS is because it's always hooked up to your internet is that it's connected to the internet so you can access it anywhere in the world. In addition, because you can access it anywhere, it's basically like having your own Google Drive, your personal cloud to send links to whoever you want. So the days that you have to use Google Drive are over, screw that 15 gigabyte limit, you can just put anything you want, send it to your clients, send it to your friends, send it to anyone who wants your files, and it's a smooth process for sure. Lastly, an extremely underrated pro of having a NAS is that it basically operates as your own private cloud, like I mentioned. However, that is basically like having an iCloud backup. So Synology has a photo app where you can just basically download on your phone, it uploads everything to the cloud while your personal NAS, and you have all your backups, no worries. So you don't have to waste so much money on extensive storage for your MacBook, for your iPhone, especially on iPhone. I've tried to back my iPhone photos up myself not using their iCloud service and it's ridiculous if you take them from airdrop they don't have the right dates if you take it from like plugging it into a computer it's in a ridiculous far arrangement very hard to use and access it's a nightmare but with the Synology cloud app everything is seamless and you just save money not buying iCloud not buying a 256 gigabyte iPhone so that's a huge pro that is very underrated so moving on to cons although you can access your files everywhere you are limited by kind of like Google Drive speed so obviously if you've ever uploaded anything to Google Drive before it's not very fast it takes a while 20 gigabytes uploaded I don't know, it could take upwards to 30 minutes, an hour, depending on what your Wi-Fi is at. So keep that in mind. I think the biggest con is that buying that box that houses the hard drive. So disclaimer, you have spaces in your hard drives. It doesn't mean they're full. So you have to buy hard drives and the big black box. And that obviously costs money as well, buying the NAS itself. So it is an investment, although I do think it's worth it. In addition, you will need to plug an ethernet cable into your laptop if you want some decently fast speeds. So there are options if you have a Wi-Fi router, which you definitely will at home. Basically, you can access your files through Wi-Fi as well. However, that is much, much slower than actually using a cable to connect it like anything in the world. So that's not super practical. You can download like 
like a video here and there, but you should plug it in somehow. So you might need a dock if you're using like a MacBook or just some additional peripherals. But I do think again, it's worth it. One additional small con of this system is that it does make some sound. There's a little bit of like low pitch humming. Honestly, it's not that bad. It's fairly close to my computer, which probably isn't ideal. I should move a bit further away from my room. But that being said, even when I'm doing work, when I'm editing, I don't really notice it. It just like drowns out eventually. So it's not that bad. And also, you should leave your NAS on the whole time, so it does run your electricity bill a little bit, but it's not much, maybe like 30 bucks a year. It's not really that much of a deal. We'll go into my exact workflow straight away, and keep in mind, I'm more of a basic user. I feel like a lot of NAS YouTubers, they're very hardcore, and they buy and spend a lot of money that we would never do as just like solo content creators, solo filmmakers, or anything like that. So let's go to my actual setup and what I would recommend and what I've been doing. Okay, so first of all, when people talk NAS, how the heck is it actually wired up? Even as a noob looking on YouTube, people don't really talk about this, but basically you need to know that if you have a NAS, you have to wire it straight to your router, your Wi-Fi router, so that it can be on your local network so that it can access the internet. And in addition, if you want a faster, decent speed, you need to put your ethernet cable from a NAS to your laptop. So, so two cables, NAS to your laptop, and then NAS to the Wi-Fi router. Now on the topic of the actual ethernet cable connecting your laptop to your NAS, we need to differentiate, should you actually work off your NAS? So what I mean by that is, a lot of people edit videos, edit photos, or try and do that on their NAS, straight off the NAS, so that all their files are there. And to be honest, that is a more convenient solution. However, long story short, unless you're prepared to spend a lot of money, you should not be working off your NAS. The reason for that is the standard ethernet cable is one gigabit per second, and that's basically 125 megabytes per second, which is some pretty decent speeds for transferring files back and forth. If I was trying to back up two terabytes of footage, for example, that would just leave it overnight, maybe about six hours. That is something manageable, and in this context, you kind of need to know how much data you will be moving around. If you cannot live with six hours for two terabytes, then you need more of an upgrade of a one gigabit cable. So if a one gigabit cable and those speeds I just mentioned is too slow for you, you need to look towards a 10 gigabit cable. And with that is a bunch of headaches. You need to buy a NAS that has a 10 gigabit like adapter. If you have a MacBook, for example, you need a bunch of dongles and intermediate things. But long story short, it's gonna cost you like another $500 at least to get these speeds. And by that point, for me personally, that's just a waste of money and there's no point getting those high speeds. Furthermore, if you do manage to get this 10 gigabit connection going, editing off a NAS full of hard drives is actually going to be slower than working off one Samsung SSD, for example. There's an explanation in this video up here, but long story short, it is not an optimal setup. You can get around that by putting fast SSDs into your NAS, but again, you need a 10 gigabit connection. That's gonna cost a lot of money. SSDs are gonna cost more money as well. It's a headache. I would recommend not doing that. And my personal situation is basically the NAS is just a place to back up and store all my files and I will continually work off a two terabyte Samsung SSD. As I'm working on important projects, I'll put the SSD footage onto NAS straight away. And if I'm running out of storage on the SSD, I can just feel free and delete it because things are fairly secure into your NAS. Now I just called a NAS a backup solution, which people really do not like hearing in this community. The reason for that is if my house goes on fire, if my Synology NAS, I don't know, for some reason blows up and destroys the hard drives with it, my data is gone. There's no backup up in that sense. People also refer to a 3 to 1 backup rule, which basically means three copies, two local on-site and one off-site, for example, something like that, but that is very overkill because all my friends who are content creators, whatever, they either use a bunch of portable hard drives or SSDs, and this is definitely a step beyond that. Obviously, in the perfect world, we would use 321, but the reality is 99% of people who use these horrid portable hard drives are using portable hard drives. So this would be a gigantic step and much, much safer than using that in the first place. So in summary, I basically work off my SSD. If I need some old clips from a NAS, I can just drag them in. 125 megabyte transfer speeds, if I want to find old files, is pretty fast, I can just grab them, chuck it into maybe a local folder on my SSD so I can work off that. Two terabytes of space there, very easy to work with and it would just be like kind of like a sliding window of deleting stuff off my SSD and then putting new footage on. So overall for my personal needs, this has been working great. Everything is unified, everything is so stress-free. I've saved money not having to buy iCloud because once you buy iCloud, it's basically you have to buy every single year or you're going to lose your data. So that's a huge bonus for me and everything is just so streamlined. Navigating through all those portable hard drives is a freaking nightmare. You do not want to do that. There's so many times I've been editing videos and I'm just like, oh, where am I gonna find this video? I probably can't find it. 
I'm just not gonna put the video in. But with the NAS now, I can search through everything very easily and it is well worth it. The only problem with this setup is that sometimes I'm not gonna have enough Thunderbolt ports to put the ethernet cable into my laptop. So it is fairly recommended that you do buy a dock, but buying docks costs more money. Honestly, I'm kind of happy where it is right now. I'll just plug it in when I need to and then I'll just take it out if I have to. It's also worth mentioning if you have only USB slash Thunderbolt ports on your laptop, you need an ethernet adapter to plug it in. So as I kind of mentioned, I have an 8-bay NAS and there's four 12 terabyte hard drives in there. The reason I got eight bays is to basically future-proof myself for a long into the future. I don't actually need that much slots and storage at this stage and I think I could go for at least another 10 years before I even come close to filling that thing up, but that's what I went with. If I was recommend something to you, basically if you're a bit on the fence and you don't want to spend too much money, I would go for the four base Synology NAS and I would find the biggest hard drives possible because you don't want to buy two terabyte hard drives and then it all fills up and then you're just sitting there being like, what the heck do I do with two terabytes? You can't really sell them on Facebook Marketplace or anything like that, so buy big hard drives. 12 terabytes, 16 terabytes, even 20 terabytes, it's worth it in the long run, especially if you don't buy something huge like an 8-bay NAS. So I'm probably not even using the NAS to its fullest potential by any means, but it's still made a huge positive impact to my life and using data and storing data. So save yourself the hassle, get a NAS, trust me. Other than that, I hope you enjoy these pro tips. Leave any questions in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.